Hi everyone! Welcome back to Genie Book. Welcome back to P4 Math Lesson with Coach J. I'm so excited to see you guys again. Now, today we are going to talk about line graphs. Line graphs to be exact. Okay, line graphs. How many of you guys have actually learned line graph in school? Anybody? You, even if you have not learned line graph in school, actually, you would probably would have heard of it. You would have seen it since primary three, right? Even though you learned bar graph, you also talk about bar line graphs. Yes? Yes, correct. Lovell, you're right. You, you guys learned it last year as well. Okay, good. That means today's lesson will be easy for you. It's a breeze and guess what? Your bubbles are going to be in your pocket then. Okay, so get yourself ready. We are going to dive in right away. Okay, let's take a look at this particular example here. Um, we, let's talk about interpreting line graph to be more exact first, okay? Line graph here shows the number of tourists in Singapore over a period of four years. Now, look at this animation and see what are the numbers like. Okay, we have 2017. Oh, and then went up to 2018. It went up again in 2019. And oh, sadly, something happened in 2020 and it decreased. Okay, pause here. At this point, before you even do anything in, in the question, before you even read the questions, what I want you guys to do is, first and foremost, tell me, can you write in all the numbers first? You must always fill in the numbers, the tip number one for today. All right, the first tip that I'm giving you right now is fill in details. Fill in the details on the graph first, then start reading the question. Okay, fill in the details. Let's look at the details first. What is given or what are given over here? Boys and girls, can you see over here? This is something that is very crucial that I want you guys to take note of. This number of tourists here are in thousands. Can you see? The axis here will tell you everything. This is in thousands. Means that when you see in 2017, 2017, basically what we have over there, you can see... Here, this is 60, right? It doesn't mean just 60 tourists, but it's 60,000 tourists, okay? In 2018, all right? In 2018, what do we have? We have to see, oh, I have no idea. It doesn't look like it coincides with anywhere. It's just in the middle of nowhere on the line, all right? On one of the lines there. So if that is the case, I might not be able to calculate easily. However, from here, then you need to do the very first step. Ask yourself this. What is the value of each interval then? Okay, ask yourself, what is the value of each interval then? So if, do I know what's the value of each, each interval? I can see. When you see the jump over here from zero to 20, how many gaps do we have? Second tip of the day, all right? The first tip that I gave you earlier on is fill in the details. Second tip of the day, count gaps. We always count gaps. So you count the gaps over here. What do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five gaps, right? You can see five gaps over here. So that means if there are five gaps and these five gaps represent 20, correct? It represents 20. So I know five gaps is equals to 20, all right? If I know five gaps is 20, I know that one gap will then be 20 divided by 5, that gives me 4. That's it. So the value of each interval is 4. So do not assume. All right, guys, do not assume that it will always be plus 1 or plus 5, even though that is the, the, the usual case, right? The usual case is always either a plus 1 or a plus 5. But in this case, it is not. It is plus 4 and not just 4, but 4,000. Okay, got it so far, everybody? Anybody not clear on what is happening? Okay, good. Pretty easy. Yes, Royce, I'm waiting. Don't worry. Aiden, your question, can I also count the loans instead of the gate? Yeah, the lanes, you mean? The lines. The lines? Count the lines. No, do not count the lines. Very good mistake over here, Aiden. Do not count the lines. Why? Why do we not want to count lines? If you look carefully, if I have five gaps, how many lines do we have here? Can you see the number of lines? Can you see the number of lines here? You can, right? Let me change to my lightsaber. I have one line, two, three, four lines. Can you see? There are only four lines between. So it is not accurate to, to count by lines. So count by gaps instead. 
Okay, count by gaps instead. Yeah, no worries. This is a good this is a good um asking point and question right over there. Okay, so let's see. So if I have four gaps, now um every gap has four, sorry. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, four lines over there means there are three gaps, right? So we can see the three gaps. One, two, three, four gaps here to reach to 2018. So if that is four gaps, right? Four gaps away, what does it mean? It is four times four. That gives us 16, okay? So that means this is actually 76 because it's 64, 68, 72, 76. This is how you count. Got it so far? So that's how you get 2018, which is 76. How about 2019? Okay, type it in right now. What is 2019's value? What is 2019's value? Yes, Hengyu, you are absolutely correct. You can also minus away if you want to, since it's just one gap away. Adriel, what do you not understand? Go ahead and ask. 2019. All right, I want 2019. 2019 is actually one gap away from the top. Can you see that? It's one gap away from the top. You can do the subtraction as well. And we actually have one gap away, correct? Okay, so let's see. One gap away, we have 96. Very good. 96, very good. 96,000 to be more exact, but it's okay. We can leave the thousands out for now. It is fine. Oh, then something happened in 2020. The number of tourists plunged. What happened? What happened to that? I have no idea what happened. What do you think guys think happened? That's right. COVID-19 happened. Okay, COVID-19 happened. And because of that, the number of tourists just plunged. And what happened in 2020 then? How many tourists do we have in 2020? 44,000. Okay, 44,000 over here. Okay, good. Yes, Chen Tong, what's your question? Okay. No question. Okay, good. Then we shall move on, all right? Oh, the question is here. What if the line end up in the middle of a gap? Ah, that's a very good point. What happens if it is here? Okay. Now, that's a very good point. Here we go, tip number three. When you have a gap, when you have a point that is in between, okay? So I write down points in between of gaps are taken to be exactly half. Okay, I repeat. The points in between are taken to be exactly half of the gap. Okay, they are taken to be exactly half of the gap. So what does it mean over here? It means here, now, since we said that one gap itself is worth four, correct? One gap is worth four. So if one gap is worth four, it means that I have a value that writes max in between. Let's say, for example, um, here. If this is here, over here, can you see, guys? Can you see this red dot in 2018? What is this value? We know that this line here will represent 44. This line here will represent 48. So what would the dot be then? Okay, what would the dot be? The dot would then be 46. Very good, Zoe. Thank you very much. This will be 46. Okay, very good. Uh, Chen Tong, your question is amazing. All right, keep that coming. So this is the reason why you are asking good questions, all right? So keep asking relevant questions over here and I'll keep it. Yes, uh, well, if it's an odd number, it's a decimal. May, yes, but uh, for your syllabus, you don't worry. In primary four, you don't have to, okay? You won't reach a, a decimal over here in this case. So don't need to worry. Yes. Okay, so we move on, all right? Let's go answer the next question then. So the next question here is, now that I know the number, the value of one gap, question, how many tourists were there in 2018? Do you see? When the question comes out, what happens? I don't need to do anything. I just need to refer back to my graph and I could tell that it will be 76,000. Please remember your thousands. Okay. Yeah. Kai, yes, is four in one gap. So that's the exact same thing that was, that was 
why, why need a thousand ROIs? Because they ask you for how many tourists. They never ask you for what is the value over there. You understand what I'm saying? They ask you for how many tourists. The number of tourists is in thousands. Okay? As much as it's from the graph itself. Okay, Adriel, you can learn it from here right now. Right? So this is the first lesson for everybody as well. Yes. Hi, Kaining. Yes, your question. No question? We'll move on. Okay, let's go. Let's see the third question that I have for you guys then. What was the decrease in the number of tourists from 2019 to 2020? Okay, 2019 to 2020. Now, we already calculated the value. Can you see? We already have. So all you need to do, Jaylene, absolutely correct. Brilliant. You just need to minus. We have 96 minus 44. Of course, I do remember the thousands. All right. So you just need to add in the thousands later. That it will give you 52. So answer will be 52,000. Okay. That is a decrease in 52,000 tourists from 2019 to 2020. Pretty easy to understand, guys. Gabriel, why did I put the thousand? Because the question is asking for the number of tourists. If they just ask for the, the value on the graph itself, then yeah, it will just be 52. But rarely will question just ask you for the, for the number on the graph. Okay? Rarely. Shalene, why five gaps equals 20? Because you can count over here. Can you see? Every five gaps, then you jump by 20. Every five gaps, you jump by 20. So that's something that you need to remember. Okay. Adriel, no, you are not. Definitely not. It's something, it's something new for everybody. When it's new for you guys, it may seem difficult. It may seem a little bit confusing. Relax, all right? Math is all about understanding. But at the same time, it is about asking. When you ask the right questions, you will lead you to the right answer. Okay? Do not just think about the answers itself. Think you, interpreting means just understanding the graph itself and then get the values out from there. Answer the questions based on what the, the, the graph gives you. Bavesh, how to remember at thousands? That's a very good point over there. You can actually do what I just did here, which is to highlight in the exam. So that's why you realize in the exam, before I even read the question, what I did was I fill in the details and I read the axis to see what is given first. All right, they can trick you later on. You will, you, you'll see. I'll, I'll show you some tricky questions over there. And then you'll notice that that's the reason why a lot of students cannot get it. All right. Yes. Shall we go on ready? Let's take a look at the next question and then you will see what is in store for you or what rather what exam questions will be like. Let's go. Take a look at here, this question here. Uh, don't look at the question first. Let's read the whatever the question gives. The line graph shows the amount of money Potter saves each month from July to December. Uh, okay, Potter, Mr. Potter saves this much from July to December. First and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, we say that we look at the Axis, all right? Look at the axis first. Axis here, this is in savings. So is it in tally? Yes. Question says saves and the graphs give savings. Now, why do I want to emphasize on this? Okay, can I give another tip here? Are you ready for another tip? If you're ready, type in yes. Let me know you're ready if I give. If not, I think I can move on to the question. Ready for another tip? Okay. That's good. All right, so here is the tip. The tip is this. Here goes the tip. When you see, why am I emphasizing so much on the axis? Because if the question says saves, it must tally with whatever the graphs give. Can the graph show a different thing? Yes, it can. What can they show? Can you tell me? Can you type in the chat and let me know? What do you think they can possibly give you also instead of savings? Can I just change the value? Ah, Teddy, you got it. Heng Yu, yes. Zachlin, good. Ting Wen, yes. Absolutely amazing, all right? Yes, so what is it over here? Basically, what did they say? This can also be spending. You see that, guys? They can also give you spending. Heng Yu, yes, they can also give you total. But spending will be the trickier one. You see that? If I were to give you spending, you will notice that a lot of students will get this question wrong very easily. So that's the reason why I'm telling you, emphasizing again and again and again, look at the axis first. Okay? Now, then let's fill in the values. Okay, let's fill in the values right now. 
July, we have 450. August, I have 900. September, I have 650. October is 150. November is 300. And December is 500. Okay, the very first question, I am not going to help you. I want you to do it on your own. How much did he save from July to November? July to November. Okay, I am going to give you one minute and 30 seconds. I'm going to give you one minute and 30 seconds. This is just a... Oh, done. That's fast. Okay, ready? I'm going to launch it in three, two, one. Let's go. Your very first bubble question. Work it out first. For those of you who are already passed me ahead of me, you would have worked it out already. Yes. Congratulations, Owen. That is a very, very good. I'm very happy for you, honestly. Is it Harry Potter? I have no idea if this is Harry Potter, but if it is, then yeah, Harry Potter. You can be. They didn't say, right? Doesn't matter anyway. Okay, let's see. You have one minute. Don't worry. You have more than enough time. Okay, slowly add it up first. The values I want. The savings from July to November. Okay, let's see. Ah, wow. I can see that actually many of you guys did very, very well for your WAs or your weighted assessments. That is one of the, I wouldn't say it's the best teacher's day gift for a lot of teachers. I would say it's one of the better better gifts. Why? Because especially for me, I, I'm not so I'm not so critical. I don't want to focus too much on your results itself. I want to see the effort. That is more important to me. Okay. So I hope that you scoring 98 out of 100 is because you put in a lot of effort to get a 98. Okay. And for those of you who didn't do as well, I hope that it is because you have done your best already and you still couldn't do well enough. Okay, so then from there, you need to know what is the issue. Not so much of the results. I do not worry so much about the results. I worry more of how you got to the results. Okay, let's go then. How much did you say from July to November? Now, July to November, we can see. July to November. I don't care about December. Ignore December then. Add up the values. So let's add it up now. Let's add up the values. We have 450 plus... 900 plus 650 plus 150 plus 300. Add this all up, ladies and gentlemen, you will get a grand total of $2,450. Okay, so how much did you save from, from July to November? Altogether, he would have saved $2,450 dollars all right just add it up owen just add it up the values of the savings okay just add it up with two okay question next any question if not we will move to the second question this is just very easy okay sherry yeah do i look like i am <laughs> okay good yes divya question What is the tip? What do you mean by what is the tip? Where is the tip? Owen, I believe you made a careless mistake over there. So recalculate again for yourself. Okay, then you will be able to see. Owen, don't add the 300. Okay, the 300 doesn't count. December doesn't count. I only want it to November. Okay, let's move on then. Let's go. Second question over here. I have three objects X, Y, Z were placed in container C one after the another. The other line graph shows the mass of the container and the objects. Now, for this, I am going to help you again by filling in the values on the graph for you. All right. Let me fill it in for you on the graph again. Now, this time around, it is not exactly at the hundreds, but we see. Okay. So this is the mass. This is the mass. The axis tally. It is fine. Very safe. How many gaps would there be? Five gaps here, boys and girls, five gaps worth 100. So that is my first step, correct? I told you so. Count gaps. If five gaps is 100, one gap will be 20. So every value is 20, correct? And that gives me 80 for this. We have 200. 
this will be 400 minus 20. That gives me 380. And then we have 440 because every gap is 20 over here. With this, now, very first question, which object is lighter than a container? I don't want to help you first. I want you to see you struggle before I help you in this question because I know that you guys can do this. Okay, let's go. I have one minute, 30 seconds. Ready? Let's go. Second bubble question I have for you. Ask it away. 10 bubbles, 10 bubbles. Okay, Sanjana, yes, the value is already there. So you can take a, take, take a look at it. Take a look. What is the mass of the container? Hint, hint, guys, hint, hint. What is the mass of the container? If you know the mass of the container, you will know how to do the rest. How heavy is the container? Yi Xiang, hmm, I wonder. How heavy is the container? Hmm. Teng Yang, yes, of course. Go ahead. Teng Kai, this is a warning for you. Can you please stop it? Chuang, are you sure? Are you sure it's going to be there? Hmm, let's see. Work it out and then you know. Heng Yu, wow, that's amazing. Yi Xiang, look carefully at the graph. Look carefully again. Okay, it's actually shown over there. Emily, don't worry. I'll go through. Jaden also, I'll go through. Okay? Yeah. Heading, what was it? How do you do? Okay, those of you who get it correct, you are very careful. Tap yourself on the shoulder and tell yourself, well done. Okay, those of you who can get this correct, you know that you are very careful as a person. Okay, time is up. Now, time is up. Let's see. Which object, X, Y, or Z? Those of you who have clicked it already, you would have seen that the answer is option number three, which is object Z. But why is it object Z? Why is that so? Let's do a calculation. You need to do some calculations over here, right, guys? If you don't do calculations, you will not know. Yi Xiang, to answer your question, you will have seen already by now that container's mass is here. is 80 grams. So if the container is 80, I add on an X. Can you see? I added an X and it became 200. What does it tell me about X? It is 200 minus the 80. And that gives me 120 grams. We'll do the same for Y. Now I add on a Y and that gives me this. So Y will just be using the 380 to minus the 200. And that gives me 180 grams. Let's do for Z then. When you do a Z, you can see that you use 440 minus 380 or 380. And you will get a value of, what do we have? 60 grams. Voila, answer 60 grams. Container is 80 grams. Can you see that? Yes, okay, so you just need to do this, you will be able to see. So those of you, when I say you are careful, you will know why, okay? Because you need to subtract away. It's not so straightforward that when you read off the value from the graph itself. Uh, Vu, let me answer a question. Why is it 200, the question? Did, because it's like what I showed you over here. Can you see the value of CX is 200? Yeah, so that is the reason why. Okay, Isyang, so when you read the question, you can see container C is given in the question also. So you need to be extra careful. Good, I can see many O's and OK's already. I know that you guys are getting it. That's amazing. Happy to see that. Can I move on then? This is still quite easy, right? Okay. Good, let's go. Don't worry, you will get a chance to see it again. All right? You'll get to see more. When you do more questions, you'll get more careful. You'll get more skeptical, I'd rather say. Okay, you'll get more skeptical of the values that are given and the graph itself. Be more critical and skeptical about the graphs, okay? Do not just accept whatever that's given over there. All right, question number three. We have line graph here shows the number of visitors to the museum over six months, okay? I'm going to the museum over six months and what do I see? I see that which month was the number of visitors twice the number of visitors in January? Before that, let's fill in the, the values again. 
Okay, this time round, I'm not going to fill it in for you. I want you to fill in yourself and answer this question. You have one minute. All right, let's go. One minute. One minute. Fill in the graph and then you can see already. Fill in the values and you get your answer immediately. I promise you. Follow the tip. The tip number one says that. Fill in details. Okay, follow the tip. Follow the tip. Right, guys, I know that many students are able to see their results transform in a very short period of time. And I can see that. I know that also. I know that it is very possible. Why? Because these people, these students, they apply what they learn. That is more important. You apply what you learn. Okay? Do not just look at this and memorize for the sake. Yeah. Good. Okay. I can see that now the values have gone up already. Yeah, Royce, you are correct. That's good, amazing. Owen, that, that's a huge improvement. Okay, let's see, let's see. All right. Let me help you with this. For those of you who cannot get it, first up, January, you can see that there's only one line, right? Which is two gaps. So therefore, that will be 50 worth, all right? So it's 250 here. Then we go to 300 in February. March is 650. April is 200. May is 500. And June, we have 350. Question asked for twice of January. January, we have 250. So if I have twice of it, you know. What am I looking at? 500. Very good. Which month has 500? Here. Option number three. Do you see that? So when you do these kind of questions, you do not, again, fill in the details, you get your answer immediately. Got it? All right. Great work over there, guys. Let's go. Keep it going. Your momentum is there. You have to keep it, keep it coming. Line graph shows the amount that Kelly saved over a period of five months. All right, now this time around, Kelly is going to be around. Save for five months. Which month did she save three times as much? Again, one minute, your own. You saw how I did it earlier on. It's your turn this time around. Okay, let's roll. One minute. Shonsi, let me answer your question. How do you get 500? It is because we use 250 times two. Or use 250 plus 250 since it's twice of it. Okay, yes. Uh, let's see, let's see. You guys able to get it this time around? This is a very easy question, right? Yeah, I know that you can, I know that you guys can get it. Ah, many of you, oh, read, guys, guys, look at the options carefully, okay? Look at the options carefully. There are, there are two options that look very similar, okay? They look very similar in terms of the way it's, okay, so do not make a mistake. I saw that. Quite a few of you who chose that the other option. Correct. Yeah, those of you who can see the two options, you will know, all right? You will know one of it is correct. Okay, one of it has to be the answer. Okay, good, good, good. Let's see. Elizabeth, cool. You might want to join in using the web app instead of the Zoom directly. Then you can participate in the bubbles. Okay, let's take a look at this question here. Now, January, what do we have? January, we have 10. Again, guys, savings, is it tallying? Yes, it tallies. Can you see that? The tip makes sense. Okay, the tip makes sense, it tallies. So this is 10. February, what do we have? 20. March, we have 40. April, we have 15. Again, this is in between of 20 and 10 with only two gaps. And May, we have 30. Now, I want it to be three times of January. January is 10. So what is 10 times three? That gives us 30, which is May, not March. Even though the spelling looks very similar, look carefully, okay? Answer is May, okay? It is not March. Yes, I know, May is correct. <laughs> yes, Lovell, that's good. Good to see that and hear that as well. Any question, guys? This is okay. Almost got it wrong. Yes, Iris, you are right. Almost, right? You're almost. I, I saw quite a few of you who chose that much. For those of you who chose much, can I just check? Is it because you guys saw wrongly? 
Or is it because you really thought that much? Ah, is it because you just added 30 instead? Is that, is that the reason why you, you, you chose much? Only two reasons. Either you saw wrongly or you, you added 30 instead. Yeah. Okay, so now you know. When we say thrice, when we say three times of it or twice of it or four times of it, it is exact value. All right, you just multiply and get it. There, there's no need for you to add, do any addition again. Not for now, until later when I tell you to. Lucas, there's no need to draw model for this, okay? This is quite straightforward here. Okay, let's move on then. Good, 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 good. We are on track. Very good. Question number five. The line graph shows the amount of petrol left in a car and the distance it has traveled. Okay, guys, this one, right? I don't want to say anything first. I don't want to say anything first. I want you guys to work it out. Okay? I want you guys to work it out. I'm going to give you one minute and 30 seconds over here. I want you to work it out and struggle through this first before I help you answer later. All right, let's go. This again, I am just going to give you a hint and tell you that, hey, listen to me, look at me. This is tricky. Okay? I know many of you will choose that answer. I know many of you will choose that answer. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to say, don't worry, Lucas. I don't want, I'm not going to say. This is worth 10 bubbles. Okay, this is worth 10 bubbles. Ah, I, I'm seeing, okay, some of you guys are asking me now, why is it yes? Why, why is that so? Because, because, because you have not Remember my tip. I told you guys, guys, what is tip number three? Tip number three. What did I say about tip number three? You're welcome. For those of you who have applied it and already got it correct, you'll know. Quinton, yes. Exactly. Zheng Yan, it is the same. All right, whatever you are seeing right now, it is what you're going to learn. Okay, so just learn along the way. Okay, that's more important. Yes, Jing Wen. It is correct. Ah, so I'm not surprised that I'm seeing the numbers over here. There are many of you who really chose the answer that was wrong. Okay, so don't worry. Let me explain to you guys why. I purposely want to choose this question to show you one thing. Okay, it is not about learning this already or not. Okay, guys, it is not about you having learned this in school already or not. This, is, this topic itself is not a big topic. It is not a very difficult topic. It is something that you just need to understand as you learn. So when you learn it over here today, it's the first lesson as well, right? Everybody's here is the first lesson. Learn it along the way together. Okay, make mistakes along the way. It is fine. Now, what is the trick? I gave you three tips already, if you remember. First tip, I said, fill in the details. Second tip, I told you. Second tip, I told you. What is the second tip? Do you guys remember? What is the second tip that I said? After you fill the details, we count gaps. Then the third tip came in, and I said the third tip is to look at the axis. Look at the axis. All right. Now, question says the amount of petrol left in a car. All right. And the distance he has traveled. Okay. Did it tally? Yes. Amount of petrol left, amount of petrol left. Yeah. Okay. Good. In liters as well. Question asks how much petrol was used? Do you guys see it? Is there a big difference over here? You, you, are get, you must get this correct. How much petrol was used? Guys, I'm trying to teach you guys how to be AL1 student. AL1 student, you just need to be extra careful. And in this case, how to be extra careful, you just need to see. Hey, the question is, how much petrol was used? Graph shows how much petrol was left. Okay, how much was left? So we have 30 liters left. And then it went on to 60. It went on to 15. Sorry, not 60. It is supposed to be 25. And then it went on to 10 and eventually 5. Okay, so from here, this is the amount left. I emphasize amount left. I want to talk about use. At 90 kilometers, how much was left? This is, ladies and gentlemen, this is, can you see? 20. 20 liters was left. So I'll write down 
20 liters left. So how much was used then? We started off with 30. Can you see that? We started with 30. So if it is 30, I started with 30 liters at zero kilometers. Can you see that? What does it mean at zero kilometers? Means that this happens before the car moves. Can you write it down, guys? Before the car moves. Before the car moves, it is at 30 liters. Zero kilometers. 30 liters. Okay? At 90, it became 20. So we minus the 20. What is that then? 10 liters used. Option number one. That is the reason why those of you who chose option number two, I am so sorry. It is not meant to trick you. I am not here to trick you. It is just a learning point that I want to point out to you. Okay? It is a learning point. And I hope that you guys get, are getting this learning point. Okay. Any question? Now, Bavesh, you asked a very good question. He said that I thought the very first night, the first 90 km is added 30 to 20, but it's not. Guys, if it is supposed to add, they will tell you that this is actually the amount of petrol increase or rather decreasing. Okay. It is not supposed to be increasing or decreasing. It is the left or the use. That's all. Got it? Can we do minus then plus? Uh, what's there to plus? There's nothing to plus over here. You have to just have to minus it away. That's all. Okay, let's move on. Question. No question. Let's go. Question six. What was the greatest increase? Uh, this is really easy, guys. I, I, I will just quickly give it to you guys. One minute. Can you tell me what was the greatest increase in the number of visitors in the zoo? Okay. Fill in the details and let's go. Easy bubble question. Please get it in. This is for you to atone for your mistakes. Okay, let me see if there are any questions in the meantime. Elizabeth, that means you log in using your account in the web, in the in genebook.com itself. Okay. Yeah. Vu, but Vu, what's the meaning of increase? Guys, what is, what is the meaning of increase? Understand the meaning of increase in... Uh -huh, I see, now I see again, you guys are making a mistake, but at least more of you are getting it correct. What, what is the issue? Okay, I don't want to say anything first until the last five seconds. You have 10 more seconds. Yes, Jody, exactly, right? Aiden also. Okay, so what is the issue here? You just have to see the axis. Again, axes have to tally. Are the axes telling? Yes. This is the number of visitors, but hundreds. Hundreds, okay? Yes, you, you should be angry with yourself, but don't beat yourself up, all right? It's okay. Get understanding first. Get the understanding. So for those of you who chose that option, I know I will understand why as well. This is six on the first week. 600. Okay, to make it easy for you, how about this? Guys, if you want to, if you see this in the exam already, if you have noticed that this is in hundreds, what I will recommend you to do is straight away write in. Write it into the graph. Okay, you can see. So this will be 400. This will be, ah, this is what I'm saying. This is right in the middle. Can you see that? Right in the middle. So it's between 8 and 10. And tip number 4 says that it will be exactly half of the gap. Exactly. What does it mean then? So this will be 900. This is 1000 or 1000 and then you have 1400 or 1400. What was the greatest increase? Greatest increase means that from here to here, how much did it go by? How much did it increase by? The, the increase, this is a negative actually. It is a minus 200. Then it went up by 500. And then it went up again by 100 and subsequently it went up by 400. So what is the biggest increase then? 500. Can you see that? Answer has to be option number four. Now, can I test you another different question then? The question is this. Which one week period, okay, I, I repeat, which one week period was there the greatest increase in number of visitors? I repeat, which one week period was there a greatest number, a greatest increase in the number of visitors? 
Okay, good. Type it in. Which one week period was there? Okay, I'm seeing right now, if you are, were to type this into your exam, or not, not type, if you were to write this into your answer booklet, I can see that quite a few of you will get it wrong as well. That is the reason why. Okay, drum roll please. And the answer is week two to three, all right? So it is not just week two, guys. For those of you who just week, right, for those of you who just typed in week two, you know that you will get it wrong. It is from week two to week three. Question is which one week period from week two to week three. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So this is how exam question can also test you. Everybody clear so far? Yes? Yeah, week two to week three. Um, you can try not to write two to three. Okay, if you try write, writing two to three, your examiners, your teachers might mark you wrong, might mark you wrong. Okay, so just be careful with that. Okay, let's go. We move on, all right? Hmm. Let's go there. Next question. Sorry, jump too fast. During which hourly interval was there the greatest decrease in the number of people? That was what I was asking you earlier on, right? Okay, so from here, I'm going to give you again, very easy one minute over here. Quickly answer and get the bubbles into your pocket. Let's go. Five bubbles, easy bubbles. One minute, one minute. Fill in the details, write it in. Fill in the details, write it in. Later, I'll give you guys an extra tip for this. Okay, I'll give you an extra tip for this after this. Today, I've already given you four tips. I'm going to give you tip number five in this question. All right, let's see. Owen, refresh your screen. Okay, let's see. Last 10 seconds. Easy, is it easy? Ah, okay, I can see the numbers. Yes, it does look easy, but I still see some of you getting it wrong. Why is that so? Why is that so? Okay, time is up, let's go. Now, for such questions, boys and girls, can I don't go through the values right now? I believe you already know, right? Okay, first thing, look at the axis, look at the axis, fill in the details, all right? so. But I don't want to feel the details already this time around. I want to give you the tip straight away. Can I? Can I just give you the tip straight away? Okay, I'll just give you a tip right away, all right? The tip is this. When you want to look for greatest increase or greatest decrease. Okay, I'm just going to write it in. Copy it down, guys. Copy this down. Greatest increase means steepest slope. But it is upward slope. If it is greatest decrease, it is the, still the steeper slope, but it is the downward. Can you see that now, guys? So what is it over here then? There is no need for calculation. There is no need for a calculation in this case. I can ask you for greatest, I can ask you for the smallest as well, all right? So be careful. Okay, Rachel, don't worry, let me explain. When I say greatest increase, I'm looking for the steepest. You all understand what I mean of steepest? Steepest means it is the one that's most elevated, steepest. Gentlest is like this. Okay, so gentle to steep. This is called steep and gentle, all right? So when we say steepest slope down, since I'm looking for the greatest decrease, let's look for the steepest slope down. Ignore all the slope ups. The slope ups are, are useless to me. So let's see. So from 2 to 3 p.m., it is this way. 3 to 4 p.m. Actually, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, they have the exact same steepness. Can you see that? 2 to 3, 3 to 4, they look like they have the exact same steepness. Nothing to do over here. It is not the greatest yet. Let's see then. Okay. How about the next one? 6 to 7. 6 to 7 is a decrease, right? 5 p.m., to 6 p 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., nothing to mention. Why? It is steep going upwards. I'm looking for greatest decrease, not increase. 6 to 7, again, it decreased by how many points then? Can you see? 
I have no idea how many points, but I do know one thing. I can just use my, my ruler. Okay, let's use a ruler over here. Okay, I'm going to show you, all right? So you see the, the, steep over, the steepness over here? Okay. This looks like it's the steepest as of now. Then I compare with this. Can you see? 6 to 7 p.m. is actually steeper than 3 to 4 or even 2 to 3. How about 7 to 8? You look at 7 to 8. Compare, all right? So 6 to 7 looks like it's the steepest already, but 7 to 8, hey, it is nowhere. It's out of the world. Why? 7 to 8 p.m., you can see that the steepness is actually this way down. It is all the way down. If you compare, it is supposed to be this steepness, but no, it actually went this way. Can you see? The angle is also becomes bigger. Cool, right? The ruler is cool. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so you can actually use your ruler in the exam. You can look, use your ruler to tell you, is it gentle or is it a steep slope? If it is steep, then you know that must be the greatest increase or decrease. Everybody clear? If you are clear, type in C and let me know. Type in C and let me know. Yeah, Lucas, my, my, my ruler has, a, has an angle. I know that. <laughs> it helps me. Okay, but if not, it is fine. Okay, you can just get back to your pencil again. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. We'll move on, right? So answer very obvious is 7 to 8 p.m. This is uh, needless to say. Thank you. Let's go. Next question over here. Now, this question is not easy. I want to help you guys a little uh, before you attempt this. If not, you will, you'll find it struggling. Question asks you, they tell you that this is the bird flu cases in country A and B, all right, from November to March. Which two months were the difference the same? The difference in both countries the same. Now, I'm going to help you with the first month in November. Okay, I'm going to help you in November. Let's read the details first. I'm going to use one color for each country. Okay, one color for each country. Let's look at country A first. Country A, we start with one. Then it went up to 11. Then it went up to 17. It tapered down a little to 16. Eventually, it plunged to seven. That is for country A. Did I wrongly? Sorry. Uh, no. That's country B. Sorry, that's country B. That's country B. Country A will be in blue then. It started with 11. It went down to eight. Then it went up all the way to 20, dropped to 14, and eventually end off with 11 again. Can you see the two different colors now? Okay, the two different colors are going to help you. So that is the first thing. Next, answer the question. I'm looking for the difference. Let me help you with the first month. Okay, November. What is the difference in November? Difference in November, we have 11 and 1. What is the difference? So in November... We are looking at 11 minus 1. Ten. Okay, I am going to launch a question right now. I want you to attempt this yourself. Let's go. 1 minute, 30 seconds. This is 10 bubbles worth. 10 bubbles worth. You need to work some, guys, you need to work some calculations, okay? You need to do some calculations before you answer the question. It is not so straightforward. It is free bubble if you have understood what I'm saying. Okay, it is free bubbles if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, let's see. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, then you guys must get it correct. I'm still seeing a mix of answers. I've already given you the difference in November. All you need to do is find the difference in all the respective months and then see which two months difference are the same. Yes, Ethan, this kind of question, when it appears, it will be slightly more challenging already. Okay? So you, that's, that's the reason why you need to think about it. First, in the exam, when you read the question, you need to understand first. Understand it before you even do anything about it. Okay? Right, let's see. Uh, the numbers, yes, the numbers are climbing up now. Very good. KT, yes, it can be, right? Yes, KT, this can be confusing. That's why you just need to be careful, okay? This is worth 10 bubbles, Anya. Thank you, Royce. It is clear enough. Okay, let's see. So which two months are the difference the same? December, how about December? What is the difference in December? 11 minus 8. 
that is three. I just look for the gaps will do. Okay, how about January? Let's see January. January, we have 20 minus 17. Answer three. Actually, the values are here. Can you see? It's instant. It's Jan December, January. I get it in immediately. Immediately. If you want to go on, you can go on again. February has a difference of two and March has a difference of four. Yeah, but that's exactly right. So you can really, you, when you start to understand things like this, you will, you will get better. Yes, Megan, the lines can be confusing. So in the exam, what, that's why I'm using different colors. Can you see that? Use different colors. Okay, Rachel, yes, I'll explain again. Isha, I'll explain one more time, okay? Now, question already gave you in a graph like this, right? So when they give you the graph like this, what are they saying? Uh, let me erase the lines. Okay, I, let me write it in again. This is 20 and that is 17. Okay, now question gave you these lines, right? So when I fill in the lines, I will fill in, I will fill in the lines based on different colors, number one. Why? Because there are two different countries. Number two, number two, I will find the difference one by one, correct? Because the question asks you which two months were the difference the same. The difference is supposed to be the same in the two months. So in November, the difference is 10. Can you see? It's by 10 cases. December, the difference between country A and country B is three cases. So you go on and on. You continue doing so, Rachel. You can see that, hey, the difference between January and December both have three cases difference. So that's the reason why they are the answer. So December and January will be the answer. Okay, got it so far? All right, good. Next question, let's go. What was the difference in the number of comics sold between 2001 and 2004? Okay, before I launch, I'm going to give you one minute for this. Okay, but before that, let me give you some time to fill in the values first. Okay, you fill in the values on your own and then I will launch it. I'm going to give you extra 30 more seconds on my end. Extra 30 more seconds, let's go. Question 9A, yes, because there's a 9B later, Ryan. Fill in the values, fill in the values. Okay, and I'm going to launch. You have one minute to answer this question. Okay, let's see. Lucas, are you sure? Hmm. Count the gaps, right? Remember, tip number two, count gaps. Okay, I will launch it in a while. In a while's time, I will launch it. Okay, I'll give you some more time for you to work it out first, whatever values they need to work out. I hope that this lesson is helping you understand what is line graph and how do you interpret line graph properly, okay? Hmm. All right, I'm going to launch it right now. Get it in. Easy five bubbles, get it in, get it in. Oh, that's in your WhatsApp in your school, right? Okay, good. The values are good. Royce, is this the last one? No, I have another line B. All right, I have a line B for you guys. This is only 9A. That's the reason why you need the values, right? So that 9B, you'll be able to answer the question. Okay. You have last 15 seconds. The one later at the end, I'll give it to you. Okay, let's go. And this one goes up. Okay, let's, I'm not gonna fill in the details. I just, I will just dive into the answer. All of you guys should already know the answer by now. Between 2001 and 2004, what is the difference? Let's see 2001, what do we have? How many, what's the value then? One, two, three, four, five value. Five gaps is worth 250. One gap is worth 50. So this is actually 300 and this is 300, 350, 400. This is 400. 2004, we have 1,100. So what is the difference then? 1,100 minus 400. That gives us 700. Option number four. Okay. Option number four. 
Pretty easy. Let's go. Last question for the night. Last question for the night. Which two years was the greatest increase? Please do not let me down. This is something that I've told you guys. 30 seconds. Ready? Let's go. I've taught you guys already. How do we actually get this correct? You should know this already. How do we find out? I want the greatest. Okay, I want the greatest increase. Which two years? Which two years was there the greatest increase? All right. Good, good, good. These five bubbles should be in your pocket. That's good. Answer. Greatest increase, we look for the steepest. All right, we look for the steepest slope over here. So if it's steeper slope, here you go. Boys and girls, that's the steepest. Correct? So answer option number four, 2004 to 2005. Don't need, there's no need for any calculation over here. Okay, there's no need for calculation. With this, I am calling it a nine. I hope that you guys have already enjoyed and learned something today that is more important. But more importantly, I am so happy to have you guys back again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much once again for attending the lesson and being so enthusiastic in your participation. Okay, with this, I wish all your teachers happy Teacher's Day and signing off right now. Bye. I'll see you guys next week. Take care of yourself.